In the early 20th century, the Australian National Travel Association, or ANTA, worked using graphic design to advertise Australia. They commissioned designer Gert Selheim to create these, which he did primarily in the 1930s. Today, this tradition is continued in contemporary advertising campaigns. Australian life is highlighted in works from both eras, from golden beaches to local flora and fauna. This film will focus on Selheim and how his works for ANTA display modernism, modernity and modernisation and their ideals so flawlessly, how he created them and the context in which he created these pieces. It will also focus on how tourism campaigns have changed since then by looking at Tourism Australia's philosophy campaign. Gerd Selheim was born in 1901 in Estonia. After fighting the Estonian War of Independence in 1919, his family resettled in Germany. He studied architecture in Berlin, Munich, Graz, Vienna and Paris, where he was able to gain knowledge in areas of classical architecture and Bauhaus and Art Deco design, before moving to London in the 1920s. In 1926, he moved to Fremantle, Western Australia, and after waiting a year for his qualifications to be recognised, he was able to get employment as site architect at the University of WA. He moved to Melbourne in 1930, where he set up his own studio practice and began to design and exhibit posters. Within a year, he was creating posters for ANTA. From this, he became very linked to the government and other tourism work for Australia. In 1938, he was commissioned to decorate the Victorian Government Tourist Bureau. He made a mural using flat colour and photo montage for this, which was awarded the 1939 Sir John Solman Prize. It was the same year that he married a fashion model, Sally Irene Evans, with whom he had two children. In 1947, he moved to Sydney, where he established his final studio. It was here that he was commissioned to create the iconic flying kangaroo Qantas logo. He lived in Sydney until his death in 1970 at age 69. Selheim's works were created in a politically, economically and culturally developing time. The 20th century as a whole was big for Australia, as it started with Federation in 1901 and ended with excitement and building preparation for the upcoming Olympic Games to be held in Sydney in 2000. Culturally, Australia was developing, as it was no longer a colony of Britain, but it was recognised as its own independent country. In 1932, Australia was at the height of the Great Depression, catalyzed by the stock market crash in 1929. This was the great influence on people's day-to-day -day lives, and had direct effects on social, political and cultural aspects in Australia for the next decade. In the same year, better interconnections were made in Sydney, with the opening of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. This allowed for people to develop socially, as it made Sydney and its surrounding suburbs much more accessible to each other. Also providing better interconnection, this time across the country, was the start of the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. It gave Australians access to news and entertainment at home, and allowed people to become more aware of issues in the country at the time. All of these things influenced the climate in which Selheim created his works, and thus the designs of his works. Also affecting his works was the rise of modernism, which he helped to inspire. Selheim's work was incredibly modern, so much so that it was often described as unusual for the times and at the cutting edge of graphic design. He was able to achieve this largely due to his previous travels around Europe, where he was able to study different art movements. His work aligns with modernism, which refers to the 20th century movement which brought with it a set of ideas, ideals and principles around promoting change to the machine, man-made utopian world. These include promoting Spirit of the time, as they convey the spirit of Australia as a happy, casual and fun country by featuring sun, surf and happy characters. Practical needs of modern life, as this meant that men and women alike had time-consuming jobs and families, and were often on the move. The simplicity of the posters meant that they could be consumed quickly or read while running, as it was clear while still being artistic and attractive. Anti-historicism, as while many other anti posters featured paintings and other such mediums in their design, Selheim opted for a purely modern design with clean lines and geometric shapes. Truth to materials, as the posters were just that, 2D representations of a scene, clearly a poster and not a photograph or painting. Less is more, as they were minimalist in design, they had minimal shading and limited colour palettes. Elementary geometric form, generally featuring clean lines with a straight or curved slightly. Limited colour palette, consisting of primary colours. As most posters depict beach scenes, they feature blue waves next to yellow beaches and red-orange tanned bodies, with red or black typography. Universality, as even though they were depicting an Australian scene, they were so modern in design that they fit into the aesthetics of any society with modernism in it. Modern Machines, Materials and Technologies Selheim used colour lithograph on paper. While it was considered bad at its inception in the 18th century, it was revolutionised in the 19th century. Three stones with primary colours were used to allow designers to print with any colour of the rainbow. Imagery or text was able to be etched into wax, 
which would later be applied to paper or stone and then transferred onto a rubber blanket or paper. This allowed for the mass production of posters as it was efficient and cheap, especially compared to older methods of printing such as wood blocking. Some principles, such as form follows function and production, can't be applied to Selheim's works since they're graphic designs instead of physical objects. However, it's still clear that they were incredibly modern in design. His work also aligns with modernity, which is the feeling of being current and present. This is seen in his works as they feature scenes from a modern Australia, with people at the beach sporting contemporary beach fashion alongside contemporary hairstyles. His work also aligns with modernisation, which is the process of becoming modern. This is seen clearly in the descriptions of his works, like being cutting edge, showing that his works were generally more experimental in design than his peers. Modernism also had an agenda of creating a better world, underpinned with ideals of social morality and making things better for everyone. It was believed that good design would improve people's lives. In a time where Australia held a lot of prejudice against Aboriginals, who still didn't widely have the right to vote, Selheim accepted and appreciated their heritage and art style, and created designs inspired by it. As the posters were also posted around the country and the world, it promoted design for social change, as the posters allowed people from other countries to understand aspects of Australian culture, just from the scenes they visually displayed. If people then decided to come to Australia, they would then be exposed to a new culture, which often leads to more tolerance and even acceptance of people, promoting other positive social change. Advertising for tourism in Australia has changed a lot since the 1930s though. Tourism Australia is similar to what ANTA was, an organisation that encourages people, both within and outside of Australia, to travel and see parts of Australia. ANTA's mission was to develop a coordinated advertising campaign designed to energetically sell Australia to Australians and to seed the idea of English-speaking peoples visiting Australia. This is similar to Tourism Australia, as they aim to sell Australia to Australians and seed the idea of people visiting Australia. However, this is not just limited to English-speaking people. A difference between the two campaigns is that while ANTA posters were posted primarily in Australia, Tourism Australia mostly promotes Australia to international audiences. This is evident in their philosophy campaign, launched in 2019. The advertisement looks at... What makes this country so special? The first words heard in the advertisement that set up its framing. The film shows beaches, sunsets, red sand, marsupials, chirping birds, blue oceans, coral reefs, the use of the word g'day, and locals from around Australia, including Indigenous Australians. The end of the video invites viewers to come live our philosophy, alongside the Tourism Australia motto, There's nothing like Australia. These advertisements are similar to those produced by Anter and Selheim, as they have the same mission, to promote travel to and within Australia. They also feature similar iconography, with sandy beaches, ocean views and tanned people. However, they are also very different. While Selheim's productions were graphic-only poster mediums, the philosophy campaign is done in moving image, and has supporting images that are posted elsewhere, like social media, made possible by technological advancements. There's also more diversity in Tourism Australia's campaign. While Anta's posters generally only featured white people with tanned, fit bodies, the philosophy campaign features a multicultural cast. There's also more diversity in locations, showing that Tourism Australia strays from the white, beach-loving stereotype that Selheim's Anta work, as well as other Anta work, displayed. Tourism design has changed a lot in Australia since the ANTA posters, as seen. Modern advertisements aren't even in the same form, and instead take the form of videos and photos. Solheim's work in the 1930s was breaking for its time, and his works continued to be recognised, proving just how modern they were.